Okay, this is 100-120 class, and we're going to go over some briefs that are um, commonly used in admonitions, for one thing, and I do have and some practice that we will reinforce the briefs. So, let's start out with these. Do you need another sheet? I have extras right here. No, I have Okay. Could you please? K O U P L S. Could you please state your name? S T U R N. State your name for the record. F R O R D for the record. Have you ever? V U F R. Have you had? V U D. Notice N O I S. Do you have? D A O U V. Do you have? Subpoena S P. Subpoenaed. Come back with the D. Happy, H-A-E-P, and I think you need to add the asterisk in there, otherwise it's Highway Patrol <coughs> for many of you. Happy, estimate, S-T-I-M-T, plural, come back for the S. Along, A-L-G, produce, P-R-A-O, produced, come back for the T D. Copy, K-P-A-O-E, copy. Ground rules, G-R-A-O-U-L-S, ground rules, G-R-A-O-U-L-S. If you want, F-U-P-T, if you want, if you would, F-U-L-D, if you would. Truthful, T-R-A-O-U-F-L, truthful. T R A O U F L. I think, I N G. You think, U N G. On the record, O N D. Court of Law, K O F L. Penalty, P E N L T. Penalty, perjury, P E R J, perjury. Let me know, L-E-M-T, L-E-M-T, let me know. If you don't, F-O-E-N-T, if you don't, repeat, R-A-E-P-T, repeat, R-A-E-P-T, hallway, H-L, take a break, T-A-E-B, take a break, Spoken, S-P-O-E-N, spoken, especially E-P-S. And then I <clears throat> added one that's not on there because we got to it today and I thought it was great. Best estimate. Best estimate, B-E-M-T. So it's kind of like estimate. Adding the best on the front. B-E-M-T, best estimate. Do you have the list with just the briefs on it? Yes, that's what I've done. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they don't have, yeah, it doesn't have all of them, but I just thought it was a little bit overwhelming in some of the ones that it shows as briefs on the um, transcript you probably are already writing, so. Okay, so I'm going to be the, um, oh, these legs on these silly chairs. I'm going to be the, uh, yeah, I'm going to be the question. And so I'm going to skip through some of this colloquy at the beginning, just slowly bouncing in front of me. It's not counted, so just kind of follow my lead. Here we go. With a question, 
Could you please state your name for the record? Anna Maria Garcia. And have you had a chance to meet with your attorney before the deposition this afternoon? Yeah. Yes. Now, have you had your deposition taken before? No. Let me show you a document that's entitled Renotice of Taking Deposition with Production of Documents Required. Have you ever seen this document or one similar to it? Yeah. Okay. And did you bring any documents with you today in response to the deposition notice? No. Okay. Do you have any with you? Because if there's something that you don't have or you think you're missing, I'd like you to check your files and get it if you want. If you would now take a look at that later, and if there's photographs, repair estimates, or things along those lines that weren't produced, mail a copy to us, please. Let's move on now. I'm going to go over some of the ground rules before we get started. I'm sure these are things that your attorney probably already explained to you, but I want to make it clear on the record you understand that you've been given an oath, and that's the same oath you would take in a court of law requiring your truthful testimony and the same penalties for perjury. Uh-huh. Is that a yes? Yes. It's important to answer all questions audibly with a yes or no, or I don't know. Try to remember to keep your answer in the form of spoken words rather than aha uh -huh or ha uh -uh answers or pointing, or nods of the head, shrugs of the shoulders, all those types of responses are unclear, especially when we're making a written transcript here. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. If you don't, understand a question, let me know and I'll rephrase it. If you don't hear a question, let me know and I'll repeat it. If you answer a question, it's going to be assumed that you understood it and your answer would be based on that understanding. Fair enough? Yes. If you want to take a break, 
at any time for any reason. You don't even need a reason. Just let me know and we'll take a break. If you want to talk to your attorney out in the hallway, you can do that as well. No one here wants you to guess. If you don't know the answer to a question, let me know. But I am entitled to your best estimate if you have one. Do you know the difference between a guess and an estimate? Yeah, yes. Are there any reasons that you can't give your best testimony here today? No. Okay, you're feeling okay? You're not on any medication or anything like that? No. What's your date of birth? February 27th. 1986. Okay. Current age? 17. Well, in February, a couple of weeks. Do you have any questions before we continue? No. Okay. One thing I should have mentioned is that the court reporter can only take down what one of us is saying at a time. So it's important that you let me finish my question before you start to answer. Even if you know where I'm going, and I'll do the same for you. I'll let you finish your answer before I ask a question. Okay. We do need to take a favor. We need to get the tape cut. Can you go to the lab? Week 5, 100, 120. Um, take a break. Was that? I don't know if that was on your list. That's a good one. T-A-E. Yes, it is. Okay. T-A-E-B. And there's another one that came up that I thought, hmm, no, I don't see it. Um, again, if you're really interested in learning these and you want to do them for homework for replacement of um, some other rip and read, just let me know. I'd be happy to let you do that. Okay, so you would just be writing, uh, ripping your reading from the, the actual transcript. What was the one you said to put in Ashton? Was it Holland? It was, no, Happy, H-A-E-P. Oh. H-A-E-P is also oh. Highway Patrol. That's seven. I'm not positive, but I know a lot of people do it that way. Yeah, I don't know. Wait, yes. There's probably a family of those briefs, Sheriff's Patrol, I don't know for sure, but you know, that would probably coincide with that. Thank you. Okay, we're now gonna do this other, this is two voice and um, lots, you should hear lots of briefs in here as well. So I'm going to use your cheat sheet because I can't find mine. Oh, because it's right in front of my face. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Typical. Um, and this is counted in 20. So let's do this in 12s. Okay. Here we go. On the record. State your name. Raymond Williams. Where do you live, sir? City of Los Angeles. How long have you lived in that city? Approximately 
15 years. Where did you live before that time? San Diego. What is your business? I am an automobile salesman. By whom are you employed? By the plaintiff. Where is his principal place of business? San Francisco. Are you acquainted with the defendant in this action? Yes, sir, I am. And you have been subpoenaed to come to court? No, sir. Have you been called as a witness in behalf of the plaintiff? Yes, sir, I have. How old are you at the present time? I am 40 years of age. Do you remember the day this accident happened? Yes, sir. I remember the date very well. What kind of a car was the defendant operating? A Ford sedan. On the day of the accident, where were you seated in the truck? On the left hand side. Does that truck have a left hand drive? Yes, sir. Where did the accident happen? On the southwest corner of Harbor and Sixth Street. I beg your pardon. Where did you say the accident took place? On the southwest corner. Did you ever say that the accident occurred on the northwest corner? Absolutely not. Are you sure about that? Absolutely sure. I did not say anything like that. In which direction were you going? In a southerly direction. Have you had any idea how wide Harbor is at the scene of the accident as near as you can judge? Taking into consideration that it is a two-lane road, I should judge it is about 30 feet wide. As a matter of fact, it is 25 feet wide? Something like that. Is that right? Yes, sir, that's right. Do you know whether or not there are railroad tracks at that point? As near as I can remember, there are. About how far away from the corner were you when you first saw the Ford sedan? I should judge about 200 feet at that time. Can you tell us how far away from the corner the Ford car was? It was about in the middle of the block. How wide is that truck, sir? I beg your pardon? About how wide is your truck? About six feet wide. How high is it? Something like nine feet high. Was anyone else in the truck with you at the time of the accident? No, sir. No one else. Have you ever driven over that highway before the accident? I have often driven by there, very often. How often did you pass that corner? Many times during the month. Do you recollect whether or not there was a crowd in that neighborhood when the accident happened? As near as I can remember, there were three or four people. To the best of your recollection, was it light or dark at that time and place? It was daytime. Pardon me, about how many people did you say there were on the corner? About four or five. Accident happened? Okay, good. Comes up a lot in here. So that was five minutes at 100.
and we should have five more. So we're going to do the next section now. Here we go. On what part of the street were you driving? On the right hand side. Was someone else with the driver in the other car? I don't remember whether he had any passengers, sir. By the way, you were rather anxious to get home on that day. Is that right? Of course. Did you see any skid marks on the freeway after the accident? No, sir. Tell the court and jury in your own words how the accident happened, bearing in mind that you were going north and the Ford car was going west. I couldn't tell you in a few words. I was on the northbound side and I am inclined to think that the Ford car was going at a very fast rate of speed. As soon as I got past the center of the street, he hit the car in the front wheel by reason of the fact that I couldn't get out of the way. What do you mean by very fast rate of speed? Fast. For the purpose of this record, Will you be good enough to give us your best estimate of the speed? As far as I remember, he was going 30 miles an hour. To the best of your knowledge, that was his speed? Yes, sir. Do you remember whether or not he was on the right-hand side of the highway or the left-hand side of the highway? On the left. What part of his car came in contact with your truck? His right front wheel. At what rate of speed were you traveling prior to the time of the accident? At the rate of about 35 miles an hour. How fast did I understand you to say the Ford sedan was going when you first saw him? About 40 miles per hour when I first saw him. Were you thrown from the truck? That's correct. Were you seriously injured? Yes, sir. I certainly was. Could you say whether or not Mrs. Raymond was hurt very badly? I couldn't say that. I helped to pick her up and take her to the hospital. Do you say, however, that Mr. Raymond was injured? I don't believe so, sir. He was taken to the hospital, wasn't he? I believe he was. What was done for him at the hospital? They took some x-ray pictures of his neck. What time was it? when the ambulance arrived, if you know. About five minutes after the accident. Weren't you under the influence of alcohol when you were driving that day? I've never been intoxicated. Is that right? Yes, sir. Didn't the police officer take you to the police station before you were taken to the hospital? No, sir. I didn't go to the police station. 
with the officer. I understood you to say, among some other things, that your truck stopped in the middle of the street. Is that so? That is right. There was no other car or truck on that corner at that time, was there? Yes, sir. There were some cars up the street. Did you have any conversation with anybody at any time since the accident happened? No, sir. I have not. Did you have occasion to refresh your memory by talking this matter over with your attorney since the accident occurred? No, sir. Did you give your name to the police officer? Yes, sir. Quite a while later. Okay. Let's stop that. Okay, one more little blip we're going to do that involves phrasing and two voice. And this is the um, act phrases. So at the time, T E T. At that time, do you use these? Um, <laughs> okay, so it's the, um, on this little handout, I think we started this earlier this quarter, it's the third page in, or second page, front side. And these are the um, ad phrases. So, at at the time, T-E-T, -E at that time, T-A-T, -E at any time, T-N-T, -E um, at this time, T-I-T, -E at which time, T-K-H-T, -E um, at what time, T-W-H-A-T, -E at no time, T-N-T, -E at all times, T-A-U-L-T-S, at the same time, T-A-I-N-T. Let's try these. We're just going to do the two voice page. Here we go. Uh, let's go to 20, so let's do them in 13s. A little bit slower, okay? With the question, were you present at the time of the arrest? No. I was not present at that time. Did you see the defendant at any time after his arrest? I saw him at the time he came to the booking office. What did he do, if anything, at this time? At the time he was booked, he kept denying possession of any drugs. Did you have any conversation with the booking officer at that time? Not at that time. Was your partner present at the same time you were? No, my partner was not present at this time. At what time did he leave? I can't remember at this time. Was he present at the time you wrote the arrest report? Yes, sir. He, at that time, he was present with me. Did you see the defendant at the time of arraignment on Tuesday? <coughs> no. At that time, my partner was in the courtroom. Where were you at this time? I was at a meeting at that time with the probation officer. At that time, 
did you expect the probation officer to be a witness? <coughs> no, sir. I didn't expect him to be a witness at the time of trial. At which time did you ask the probation officer if he would be a witness? I just asked if he was available at any time during that week. Then who asked him to be present at the time of trial? My attorney and I both asked him at the same time. Okay. <coughs> we are going to switch now to some of the material. And I'm going to do last week's two voice assignment. This is a tough one. Last week's EV360. Oh, the grocery store? Yes. Asparagus and all that, yeah. Okay, so here we go. This is counted in 20s also. Let's do two every 12. I'm sorry, one every 12. On the record, are the rugs, to your knowledge, placed in front of any particular product, any particular type of produce as opposed to other types of produce? Let's say a rug has to go in front of the apples and grapes versus the bananas and the asparagus. Are they placed in any particular way or for any particular reason in the produce department? Yes. What's the logic behind the placement of the rugs in the produce department at that time? You're looking at a loose item versus a repacked item. Any other considerations that are given or thought about as opposed to or as to where you place these rugs? Some areas of the produce we have missed sprayers like above the greens. We would place rugs there. Any other considerations that are given for the placement of rugs in the produce department? No. Are the placement of the rugs relative to the spraying or the mist operation in the loose items versus prepackaged items? Are they done pursuant to each store manager's judgment? Or is there a standard that all stores must follow? Pursuant to manager's <clears throat> discretion, perhaps, judgment, whatever. And experience. And experience. Are grapes considered loose items? Yes. Now, as you think back about this period of time when you went up to, eventually it turns out to be Mrs. Anne Lamar. I'll give her name, okay? Yes. Can you tell me, with reference to the counter, how far away 
the rug was off the counter on the floor and give thought now that the rug's four feet wide. How far is it off the counter? Okay. Anywhere from three feet to four feet. Now you said earlier you could not recall how far the grape was from the rug. Yes. Did I understand that correctly? Right. Okay. Did you fill out an accident report at some point in time? Yes. All right. Do you see that accident report in front of you? Yes. And does it have an exhibit number on it? Exhibit number three. Okay. Let me see what you're looking at. Let me see the other stuff too. Thanks. Okay. Take a look at exhibit one. Yes. Is that your accident investigation report? Yes, it is. And that was done on or about May 23rd, 1996. May 23rd, 96? Yes. Okay. At the time, I see that there's a statement in here. Was a picture of the scene taken? And there's a check mark. No. Do you see that? Yes. And then it says, if not, why not? And it says, I picked up a smashed grape. Is that your handwriting? Yes. Sorry. It's okay. I stole your line, did you tell? <laughs> Sometimes my mind wanders and I just keep on talking. Yeah, I usually can do that without my even knowing I'm doing it. Okay, now, because you did this at 100, I'm going to assume that you didn't hear all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, at least you didn't on the audio. I'm going to go ahead and we'll um, do a little bit more starting here. Did you take a picture of the scene? No. Let's do a here. Do you have a camera available to take a picture of the scene? Yes. And are you given any training in when and where you're not supposed to or when you don't have to take pictures of an accident scene. Pictures are taken when an accident report is filled out. And in this case, did Mrs. Lamar fill out an accident report on the day of the accident? By her choosing, of course, she did not. And on your accident report, which is in front of you, What's been marked Exhibit 1, I think, from Mr. Strigo's deposition, can you read your handwriting on the cause of the accident? Slipped on grape in produce department. And would you look under the paragraph entitled Special Circumstances, and can you read your handwriting there? Special Circumstance. None, except for the floor was clear and clean. The rug was down in front of the grape section. The one grape that was smashed had no skid marks around it. Was there some importance that you were attaching to the phrase 
no skid marks around it? That's based on my experience as a manager for the store. All right. And what is the significance of that phrase, no skid marks around the grape that was smashed? What is the significance? If any. Oh, a slip and fall is what it is. It's a slip and you fall. Okay. So in order to slip, you got to slide. And I did not see that in this particular incident. Was that important in your judgment? In my judgment, yes. Was it critical in your judgment to a slip and fall? Yes. You earlier testified that it was important, a slip and fall. Yes. Okay. Let me see. You got a customer you met in produce who says she's slipped on a, and you think she's slipped on a grape, correct? I was told that she slipped on a grape. Do you know of anything that indicates she did not slip on the grape that would lead you to believe she did not slip on a grape? That's not my judgment. I'm not asking for your judgment. I'm asking, do you know of any facts that would indicate she did not slip on a grape? No. Do you understand my question? I believe I do. Okay. Can you answer it? You said it wasn't your judgment. What I'm looking for, do you know of any facts? facts will get to your judgment in a minute but do you know of any facts that would indicate she did not slip or fall as a result of stepping on a grape as i stated from the very beginning no i was not there my question see i'm trying to make a distinction here do you know of any facts that would indicate she didn't? I know you weren't there, but from your investigation that night, at that time, no. do you know of any facts that would indicate she did not, that would lead you to believe that she did not slip and fall as a result of the scrape on the floor? I don't know what you're looking for. Okay, we're gonna do the next segment for Rebecca. And it's gonna be your week seven, part of your week seven uh, EB360. And let's read this at, let's read it in 15. What is going on out there? Awfully noisy. Okay, so 15s, and I'm going to start. Well, okay, so we're going to be talking about Wise Way. You're just named for a supermarket. Wise Way Super Food Center. Sometimes it's just Wise Way Food Center. And we're going to show it again. We're also going to talk about Spartan Department Store. Here we go. Okay. Were you ever present at a time when the floor tile was being repaired at the grocery store? I can't recall telling you the truth. Were you ever present at the Wiseway Food Center when the insulation on the heating was being replaced. I can't recall that either. 
would you know the brand name or manufacturer of the tile that would have been present at the Wise Way Food Center? No. Would you know <coughs> the brand name or manufacturer of the insulation at the Wise Way Food Center? No. At Spartan Department Store, do you believe you would have been exposed to any asbestos? <coughs> other than just what we talked about with the Wise Way store, no. It would be pretty much repetitious with that. What were your job duties at the Spartan store? Basically the same thing, stocking shelves. You believe that the Spartan store would have had asbestos floor tile? Yes. You think there would have been some asbestos on the pipes for the heating system at Spartan? Yes. At Spartan stores, was it your job duty to repair or replace the floor tile and or the insulation? No. Were you ever present when the floor tile or the insulation was repaired at Spartan stores? I can't recall that either. Okay, let's take a look at that. Question, okay, were you ever present at a time when the floor tile was being repaired at the grocery store? Answer, I can't recall. Uh, I can't recall telling, telling you the truth. Question, were you ever present on the wise? At the. At the wise way food center when the insulation on the heating was being replaced? Answer, I can't recall that either. Question, would you know the brand name or manufacturer of the tile that would have been present on the Wise, at the. At the wise Way Food Center? Answer, no. Question, would you know the brand name or manufacturer of the insulation at the Wise Way Food Center? Answer no. Question at Spartan Department Store, do you believe you would have been exposed to any asbestos other than just... That's an answer. That answer. Just, other, other than just what we talked about with the Wise Way Store, no. It would have, it would be pretty much repetitious with that. Question, what were you, what were your jobs, job duties at the Spartan store? Answer, basically the same thing, stocking shelves. Question, do you believe that the Spartan store would have had asbestos floor tile? Answer, yes. Question, do you think there would have been some asbestos on the pipes for the heating system at Spartan? Answer, yes. Question, at Spartan stores, stores was it your job duty to repair or replace the floor tile and or the insulation? Answer, no. Question, were you ever present when the floor tile or the insulation was repaired at Spartan stores? Answer, I can't recall that either. Wow, we're impressed. <laughs> that was good. And I thought it was hard when we were reading it. 
Uh, great job. Okay, I'm gonna see how much we have here. Yep. Uh, okay, so we do have three takes. I'm gonna do one 120 and two 100s. warm up with it. So you know what? We we'll go ahead and start this. I'm, I'm glad I remember this. So one of these has a little bit of warm up with it. There's extra material here. So we'll use it. Kind of a little preview for you. So we're going to read this in tens, okay? Here we go with the question. And which bedroom is yours? I don't know what you mean. Well, where was your bedroom? Next to the, it was close to the bathroom. Okay. Was it near the stairs to go up? Yes. Okay. And which room was your mom's? Hers is like around the corner. Around the corner. So it was the farthest in the back. Like if I'm in my room, I just got to keep straight to go to her room. Okay. And did your mom, do you know if your mom had her door closed or open? Closed. Closed. Did she usually keep her door closed? When she, yeah, when she have company. Okay, and do you know if your mom and Bernard had a few drinks that night earlier? Uh-uh. No? No. Okay, did Bernard drink beer? I think. Okay, all right. So you were upstairs in your bedroom, and what were you doing? I was just laying down. You were laying down. Was the TV on? It was on, but I wasn't watching it. Okay. Was anybody else in the room with you? My brothers and them, but they was asleep. They were asleep, okay. And what did you hear? I heard a beating on the door. Was it knocking or was it actual beating? Right. And do you have a doorbell or not? No. No doorbell? No. Okay. So what did you do when you heard that? The first time I didn't go down there, but the second time I went down there. So what happened the first time? The first time he just knocked. Then it stopped and then he knocked again. And why didn't you go down the first time? I didn't feel like going down there. You didn't feel like going down there. Okay, all right. And did anybody else wake up? My sister. Okay. Well, she was already woke, I think. She was already awake. Okay, but your mom didn't wake up. Bernard didn't wake up. Your brothers didn't wake up. And grandma, I forgot, she was at work, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so the second time, how much time lapsed between, you know, the first set of knocks and the second set of knocks? Huh? Well, you said the first time you didn't go downstairs. Well, then what happened? Well, he knocked again. Okay. And then when I went down there, my sister came behind me. Your sister was behind you? Okay. And what did you do? I looked out the little window frame in my door, and then I tried to see who was it. Then I seen him. And who was it? Did you know who it was? It was Shorty. Yeah. Okay. What did Shorty look like? He like got short hair, 
he a little bit of he light skinned a little and I can't describe him no more. Okay. Was his hair the same as before? To me, yeah. Yes, he looked the same? Yes. Okay, and what did you say? When I opened the door, I asked him, who you, what do you want? And he said he wanted my mama. Okay. We're going to stop there and start takes. In the practice and restart it.